Hello, everybody, and welcome back into the Pillow Fort. My name is Tyler Bucks, and I'm going to be talking about something very interesting today. Modern Horizons 3 is just around the corner, and we have some more MDFCs. Now, there's a lot of modal dual spit. Now, there's a lot of modal. Now, there's a lot of modal dual. Now, there's a lot of modal dual faced. There's a lot of modal dual faced cards coming in this set where it's a land on one side and a spell on the other. But I'm going to be talking about the dual land cycle. So two color spells and two color lands. All of them come in tapped. So the question I'm kind of posing is what's a ranking for the best ones to throw in your deck and the worst ones? And as we discuss that, we can ponder a little bit. Should these replace your life gain lands? Maybe even scry lands in some decks but definitely guild gates. These should probably replace guild gates, right? So let's just get into it. I'm going to go from top to bottom, the one that I think can slot in the most decks in those colors, all the way to the one that I would say maybe you should stay clear of. So at the top of the list, we have Revitalizing Repost, which is a hybrid Golgari for an instant. Put a wall on counter on target creature. It gains indestructible until end of turn. And then of course, on the other side, it is a dual land for a green and a black. Um, I think this is pretty self-explanatory why it's so high. Most commander decks have creatures that they uh, want to hang on to, and one of those being your commander. It's always good to have something like a snakeskin veil. If the other side of that is a land, that just puts it up even higher. I think this maybe might not be that expensive in terms of buying it, um, but I think I'm going to put it in all of my decks that have Golgari colors just because of the fact that at the end of the day, if you're stuck and you really need a land, just play this as a land. And I'm going to say that for all of these. If you're in a bad spot or even just in a mediocre spot and you need a land, you should probably be playing this as a land unless you have something very specific for that front side. You know, say for this one, that uh, somebody's most likely has a board wipe or somebody has a Pongify and they're going to snipe one of your creatures and you kind of have that knowledge. If not, and you don't know if that's going to be coming, then maybe throwing this down as a land is your best option not to miss land drops. Um, and I think that's what the biggest benefit of all these cards is going to be, is the fact that worst case scenario, it's your land drop. And this is just one that can save you the game if, if it comes down to it. Somebody wants to reset the board, all right, back to square one. Uh, I'm going to build back and kind of win from here. And then you save your one, you know, big creature, your commander, put a one-one counter on it, make it even bigger and hit the, the person that uh, cast the board wipe. That is just going to blow out some games. And uh, I think revitalizing repost uh, is going to be a staple moving forward. Number two is Stump Stomp. It is one and a gruel for a sorcery. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. So this is a punch or a bite rather than a fight. So you, you don't have to uh, butt heads with the other creature. You just hit that creature or planeswalker. Um, this is awesome. I mean, I wish it was an instant, but at the same time, once again, sorcery speed removal for something even a planeswalker that you can really get somebody if they have a big board of tokens or, or you know, whatever the case may be. Um, and then again, on the other side, it's a dual land. So Stump Stomp for me is number two. Let me know if you're already uh, disagreeing with me in terms of my rankings. Number three is Waterlogged Teachings. It is three and a Demir for an instant. Search your library for an instant card or a card with flash. Reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle. And then it taps for a blue or a black on the other side. Um, why I think this is so strong is in Demir decks or Grixis or you know anything that touches this color combo, instance or even with fairies things with flash are very very powerful in these colors and at the end of the day sometimes you just need a little bit more card draw you just need that one removal spell you just need that one fairy that's going to uh you know flash in and be a blocker or whatever it is this is just so flexible 
as well as being a land on the other side. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna harp on that too often, but it's just so flexible to be able to grab any instant in your uh, library. Four mana is a little steep for sure, and the fact that it's kind of uh, specific to instants and things with flash, I get that it might not fit in every single deck, but. For me, it's going to go in basically every Demir deck I have, especially um, my Ninja's Yuriko deck. Don't tell anybody about that. All right, moving on. Next up, Strength of the Harvest. Two and a Celestia for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each creature and or enchantment you control. Um... This is just kind of crazy strong in uh, specific Selesnia colors, their token decks, their enchantment decks. Um, the only thing I would say with this in some decks uh, in these colors, you might not really want to go tall with one creature or you might not be running all enchantments or whatever. But I think in the right deck where you have a beat down kind of commander or in a uh, enchantress style deck, this is just going to be possibly a game ender for three mana. It's it's going to slot in to a lot of decks. Um, I can just see some people not really needing to throw it in there, but who knows? Maybe I'm just not seeing a, a crazy combo with it. So let me know in the comments and we'll move on to the next one. Blood Soaked Insight is five. Bear with me. Five Rakdos Rakdos for a sorcery. This spell costs one less to cast for each life your opponents have lost this turn. Uh, target opponent exiles the top three cards of their library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. If you cast a spell this way, uh, you may spend mana as though it was any uh, type to cast it. So this is basically you stealing the top three cards. So this is you stealing the top three cards of an opponent's deck. I play a lot of these cards and what you want to do is stay focused on what everybody's deck is doing and see what will most align with you. If you're looking for the ramp, if you're looking for the card draw, if you're looking for the removal, keep an eye out for who's running those things or who hasn't maybe cast some of those things yet and that you might be the one to hit it in their deck. You never know, but that's kind of why this is towards the middle of the list because there is variance there. But who knows? You might just spike exactly what you need. All three cards, you can play all three of them and you take over the game. And that's kind of Rakdos for you. It's a coin flip um, and I, I, I like this, this card a lot. It's going to go in a lot of my decks, but maybe not all of them. We'll see. Coming up next, we have Legion Leadership, which is one and Boros for an instant until end of turn, double target creature's power, and it gains first strike. Um, this is one that honestly, I have been on the fence about so much. On one side, these colors have a lot of go wide decks. So you have one ones, two twos, whatever going around. And of course, if you pump them, that's cool. But say you don't and you're swinging in with a bunch and one or two get through and you double a two two or a three threes power, it might not be that impactful like some of the other ones we talked about. However, in these colors, there's also a lot of Voltron decks, and that's when you build up one creature, usually your commander, and you attack somebody. So giving it first strike is cool, but doubling the power could just kill somebody out of nowhere. So I'm gonna leave this up to you guys as well. Should I be on the fence on this, or should I think that it's absolutely horrible, or that it should go in every single Boros deck? Because I'm just not sure right now. At the same time, I do think it should go in probably every Boros deck just because it could be a, a dual land on the other side. Again, I'm not going to keep saying that. Coming up, we have one that I'm a little bit more confident in. It's Suppression Ray 3 and Azorius. Azorius for a sorcery. Tap all creatures target player controls. You may pay X energy, then choose up to X creatures. Tap this way. Put a stun counter on each of them. I know you might be thinking, hey, I don't run energy in my deck. Why would I put this card in it? And I think a lot of people are going to overlook this because of that. But the power to tap all creatures somebody controls, especially if they're the person who just went before you and you tap all their creatures and you're free to swing at them. And then the next person is and the next person is. This is a way to possibly end the game or even if you're one on one and trying to end it just by, hey, you have all these blockers, you thought you were safe, tap all of your creatures and I can swing through um, or even value pieces, things with tapping abilities or, or anything like that. I just think 
this will have a lot more use than people think because I think that people think. Let me say that again. I believe that people will find more use in this than they think because you don't have to run energy just to get a cool effect there. I think that sounded convincing. Are you convinced? I'm gonna move on. Coming up third to last, it's kind of mean when you say it like that, is a uh, Glass Wing Grace. Three Orzhov. Orzhov for an enchantment aura. Uh, enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, has flying and lifelink. In the right deck, this is going to be outstanding. It's going to be incredible, and it's going to just swing the game ever in your favor. That's in the right deck. I feel like this one for being five mana to do those things. I have several decks in Orzhov colors and most of them, I don't even think I'll run this, um, you know, even as a corner case, like, oh, it might be good because I just don't really attack with a lot of those Orzhovs or I don't really care about defense because I'm already gaining life and draining. However it goes, I do think that in the right deck, this will be great. So keep an eye on it. Take a look at some of your decks, and if it fits perfectly in there, I would definitely throw it in. Drowner of Truth is the penultimate one here. It is five Simic Simic for a creature, Eldrazi, Devoid. And when you cast this spell, if Colorless was spent to cast it, create two zero one Colorless Eldrazi spawn creature tokens with Sacrifices creature, add Colorless, and it's a seven six. Um, if you're not really running colorless, if you're not really doing Eldrazi stuff, if you're not really doing many creature things, this just doesn't really need to be in your deck. Um, I understand maybe late game and you're kind of drawing dead and you just need something out there. This is a big threat. It's a big defender. So there is some use in that. Um, but I just think, I don't know, not many decks We'll probably just easily throw this in. And here's the big thing that's weighing against it is, yes, I've talked about how good these are, that they are lands on the other side. But Simic has the best access to lands in general. So you're going to be able to get a bunch of your untapped dual lands or even the triomes, whatever you need, you can kind of do in Simic. So you're not going to be hurting as much for a dual land that's an MDFC in those colors. So just kind of take a look at your decks and see, oh, maybe this giant creature that might sometimes make spawns would be perfect in it. Perfect in it. Will be perfect in it. Of course, I didn't say that perfectly. Let's move on to the very last one. This pains me to say, as a Grixis mage myself this one hurts rush of inspiration is one is it is it for an instant draw two cards then discard a card it would be amazing if the card stopped there <laughs> if it just was a three mana draw to discard a card that would be incredible but there's more text then discard a card at random unless you pay energy, energy. Listen, in the energy decks, auto include. This is amazing. It's going to give you card selection. That's why I love drawing uh, the, the looting spells. I love this type of effect. I really do. So in any energy deck, put this card in it if it fits there. 110%. In every other deck though, it's pretty much stone unplayable. I had a Kess deck for a while. I'm kind of building a different deck that plays with the graveyard in these colors right now. Even in that, I'm not going to put this in there, even if it is a tapped dual land on the other side, like I've been talking about. Uh, the discarding a card at random is just, it's too much variance. We were talking about variance earlier on in the list, and this is just like the evil step sister of variants when it's like discarding a card at random. We already know this as a bad thing because of two mana Tybalt. That was one of the cards that was like, oh my gosh, this card and this character looks so cool and I can't wait to play it. And then you would play it and you would just lose game after game by discarding the one. You it's always, it's somehow the, the rules of the universe know that, okay, listen, I can discard a lot of these. I will be fine. If I just don't discard this one, 
and then you discard that one. It's the same thing with gamble. And I just don't think Rush of Inspiration is as much of a gamble that you should uh, go all in on. So unfortunately, you're at the very, very end. I think, did they get concerned about that otter? See, I even, is it Lutri? The, the one from Ikoria, um, where they were like, okay, we're gonna do a cycle and let's not get the is it one banned immediately. Maybe that's what we saw here. Um, but yes, there you go. That's my list. You can tell me if I'm completely wrong or exponentially right or somewhere in between. I want to hear your thoughts because the big thing is, will you be replacing some of your tap dual lands for these cards um, outright? Maybe even just taking one straight out and putting one of these in and say, hey, you know, 75% of the time I'm gonna play this as a land, but it's good to have uh, more options. Or are you going to be a little bit more trepidatious? Are you gonna take out, you know, real spells to put these in and then the land is a bonus on top of it? Uh, let me know. I want to see what people are theory crafting for these cards. Again, thank you for watching and I will see you next time in the fort.